have utilized Twitter, yes. Okay, and is your account at Marcus A9705064? That is absolutely not my account. Okay, that's not your account. Well, on December 5th, 2022, an account under the name Marcus Allen retweeted a tweet that said, That quote, is not my account, ma'am. You haven't let me finish the question, sir. You might sir. have been the football player. You haven't let me finish the question. On and the time is mine. On December 5th, 2022, an account under the name of Marcus Allen retweeted a tweet that said, quote, Nancy Pelosi staged January 6th Retweet if you agree, end quote. Do you agree with that statement? Yes or no? That, that is, I don't, no ma'am. That's not my account at all. I have I'm no asking idea. whether you agree with that statement, yes or no? Can you please rephrase the statement? Yeah. I'm the Do you think I'm the that lady has expired. staged January 6th? I just want him to answer he'll answer. He'll answer. question. Yeah, he'll answer. I'm just telling you your time's up. Do you believe that Nancy Pelosi, do you agree with the statement that this person tweeted that Nancy Pelosi staged January 6th? I, yes I or don't. no? No. Thank you. It's not his account. Anyway, joining us now to respond, the attorney representing both Marcus Allen and the IRS whistleblower in the Hunter Biden case, Tristan Levitt is with us. Tristan, thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Uh, why do you think that there is a dual justice system? Because I don't have any doubt in my mind that we have that. Well, that's a complicated question, but clearly one of the factors has been that those that are in the ruling part of the FBI and in, in other places have a one-party mind, one ideology, and one way of looking at things. And those that question and challenge that, they're very willing to, to attack. All right. So you, how hard is it for a decorated combat Marine like Marcus Allen to have the FBI questioning his allegiance to his own country, a man that put his life on the line for all of us in Iraq. How does that feel for him? It's very disconcerting for him. He's simply all throughout been trying to do what he believes is right. He is a person of faith. He's someone that is guided by his conscience, and he's just been trying to play this straight. And so for the FBI to treat him the way that it did to begin with, and then for him to have this kind of treatment subsequently, you see, you saw that, that uh, exchange there um, with Ms. Sanchez, and that kind of treatment is precisely why he opted to not be interviewed by the Democrats initially. This is how they treated Steve Friend and George Hill in earlier interviews. And he saw that they released a report explicitly going after them, smearing these individuals. So, you know, when when they act that way, it, it, it tells you exactly what it is that they're after. But so for him, this has been very disconcerting. All right. So your client now has been suspended. Do you believe this is retaliatory? And what recourse, what remedy might he have? Yeah, so we, we actually empower oversight, which I'm the president of, actually represents both Marcus Allen and Steve Friend. But so Mr. Allen uh, has, has had his clearance suspended. He, we have filed a complaint with the Department of Justice Office of Inspector General. And so they have the jurisdiction. It's a very weak process for investigating retaliation through the means of suspension of security clearance. So it requires that they wait a year after that happens. But he's reached the year mark. He's, I think, at 16 months without a paycheck since his clearance was suspended. And uh, so we're, we're very happy that the DOJ inspector general is looking at that. He'll be interviewed by them tomorrow. And we're confident that they will help, uh, you know, help to write things there because his is a very straightforward case of whistleblower retaliation. Do you believe that the FBI at the top leadership is now trying to stop whistleblowers like your client from coming forward to silence them? And are they intimidating them? And are they harassing them? And are they violating whistleblower protection laws? Yes to the first three. The, the fourth one's a little bit tricky. So they're using security clearances because that's a method they have available to them. Other agencies I've seen do that before in my career uh, working on Capitol Hill as an investigator. But the FBI right now is particularly aggressively using the suspension of clearances as a way to go after whistleblowers. Part of the yeah. reason that they are able to do this is because the FBI does not have strong whistleblower protections. When the modern system of whistleblower protections was passed in 1978, the FBI was given a special exception. It's not that long after J. Edgar Hoover, and, uh, and they, they have had a lot of clout, although obviously their friends and allies have been diminishing as their, their recent stripes have come to light. But that's yeah. allowed them to be able to get away with quite a bit that other agencies wouldn't. Absolutely chilling. We wish your clients the best. Thank you, Tristan. We appreciate it.